Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingerFlyShop.com. Today I'm tying the Squirminator. Uh, twist on an egg and the squirmy worm. And um, I'm going to be using this here coming up. I'm going to be trying this out this year in New York. So I'm actually going to tie it on my steelhead hook. What I use for when I go up there for steelhead and brown trout and salmon and stuff. So I'm tying it on a bigger hook than what you would typically see. Um, it's a Daiichi X510. My go-to... I go to standard hook that I use up there because there it is in the in the vise. Um, you can see how heavy the wire is on it and stuff. It, you just we don't bend them, so it's what we use and that's all we use up there. We pretty much tie all our egg patterns on it. Um, what we're going to start out with is a piece of squirmy worm rubber. Um, you can find it at the shop, of course, and the color I'm using is fluorescent orange. And all we're going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to thread like threading a worm but I'm only going to put it in oh about about a quarter of an inch just want a little bit on there and we'll put it up here in the vise so you can see how much I got just like a quarter of an inch and what I'm going to do I'm going to come in with some super glue just going to put a wee little tiny bit of super glue on there and slide this up over top slide the rubber over top don't don't glue your fingers onto the hook that's not cool okay there you can see how we got it up over the bend of the hook so it's coming straight off the back like that now I'm gonna cut this off and I'm gonna have about an inch here probably about an inch total and there's gonna be my squirmy worm tail okay now the next thing I'm gonna use I'm gonna use some red ultra thread 140 denier in red, there are two reasons why. The red ends up being my my collar, and it creates like a blood dot. And what we're going to do is, I'm just going to take a little bit and try to trap a little bit of this squirmy worm down. Just enough to give it a little bit extra, other than the glue. You can see I caught some of that down there and it gives it just a little something extra to hold on to okay the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with some hairline dubbing and some red just a regular old red hairline dubbing I'm going to wax my thread so it holds on a little bit better um, you guys watch my videos I like using the high tax wax from Loon we carry it all to shop and we're going to take um, some red dubbing and dub our red thread I want to cover the thread completely with it and we're going to build up a little bit and what's going to happen is we're going to tie an egg over top of this in essence but we're going to use the egg and we're going to tie it a little bit thin a little bit sparse so hopefully when it's in the water this will show through and you'll have a little bit of a blood vein in the middle of it so I'm going to start up at the bead and I'm going to wrap back to the worm I'm just going to make sure I get it all covered a little bit too much there, so we're going to pull some off. Uh, when I pull some off, I always take and wrap it back a wrap or two. Where I want to end up, though, is I want to end up at the back. Okay, so I want to end up back here at my worm again. Now, the next thing we're going to do, and this is the most difficult part of the fly right here. Well, actually, the second step. Um, I'm going to take a piece of glow bug yarn. Uh, there we go from the bug shop just regular old the big stuff the stuff that we used to use for our indicators if you watch my indicator nymph show um, I'm going to cut a piece off about about a half an inch long you can see here how long long it is compared to the hook body okay it's not very long probably about a half an inch or so and I want to bust that up into into thirds okay there's a lot of material on this and I'm only going to use about a third of it okay so I'm going to cut that down to a third and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to really slowly kind of unrolling it in my hand and kind of spreading it out a little bit okay you can see how I there you can see how I spread it out I made a nice little I don't know flat piece out of it okay I'm going to sit that down for a second. Okay, now here comes what I was getting at was the hardest part of the fly. And that's splitting your thread in half. Now, the reason I'm using the the near thread, the ultra thread, 140, 
It's a little bit thicker and I can split this thread in half. What I tend to use is a hook. I always have hooks handy on my table here. So I usually just tend to grab a hook and do it. Um, if you have your bodkin, a bodkin will work or a sewing needle, anything. But what you want to do is put the thread in your on top of your finger there and press down. Okay, once you have it split in half, you're just going to... Oh, I'm trying to get it a good shot. There you go. You can see how I split it in half between my fingers there. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take your flat piece of the bug yarn and we're going to lay it right in between there. We're creating, in essence, a dubbing loop. I'm going to pull it up towards the fly. Okay, and then I'm going to make sure I have that all centered. You can see how I have it centered down through you know down through there and then I'm just gonna take and I'm gonna twist this up get a good twist going in there to lock that all in okay twist it with your fingers now the next part is we're just gonna palmer this up and we're gonna as we palmer we're just gonna continue to make sure all the fibers go back so we're not trapping anything down and we're just gonna palmer it the whole way up to our bead okay and then just gonna wrap it off at our bead and then I like to build up a nice collar here and I'll put two or three whip finishes on there just to help build on the collar to make a nice blood dot behind there so you have your red your red dubbing underneath there showing through oops yeah fell over my bead so I'm going to put one more on okay there you go just trim that off and then just pull all this back if there's any stray fibers or whatever you can trim this off but you can see how that made a really simple egg when this all soaks up with water that will take on a little bit smaller form in the water you can see how it made a nice little egg pattern and you get the little tail to give it lots of action. You can see how lively those squirmy worms are. So we can try that Try that in that keller. Um, here I can give you another option. Here's another keller I've tied. I'm going to mess up with, mess up. I'm going to mix up a couple different kellers here of patterns. And uh, like, like I always told you in my other videos, I like to go through the fly box when I'm up there fishing. If one stops hitting, if they're hitting on one and it, and it dies down, switch into another keller and try another keller but I typically tend to stay with the natural egg kellers your pinks your oranges um, creams those kind of things so give this a try I know I'm gonna be giving it a try up in New York here in a couple weeks and I hope it works for you and I hope it works for me too thanks a lot all the material you need to tie this so you can find it at our website at wholesinglersflyshop.com don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook thanks a lot I'm Sean Holsinger Thank mm -hmm. you.